Uh, so we're going to start the uh, awards session for PEST 2020. We'll be announcing three awards during this next half an hour. The PET Award, uh, the Best Student Paper Award, uh, and the Best Reviewer Award. Um, and uh, each of these awards was um, managed, chaired by a different group of individuals uh, who will introduce the award. And uh, this is the announcement of these awards. These are not, haven't been announced beforehand, so you'll be the first to find out the winners. So for our first award, the PET Award, Simone fisher Hubner. Uh, and Ross Anderson, if he's here, uh, will be presenting this award. Please go ahead. Yes, I do not see Ross. So he might not be present due to private purposes, reasons. So I will have now the honor to present the PET award of this year. So, oops, let me first see, sorry. Yeah, somehow. No. Sorry. So first the background of the Caspar Bowden Pet Award. So the Pet Award is awarded annually at Pets, and it is um, it has been founded as an award for researchers who have made an outstanding contribution to the theory, design and implementation or deployment of pets. So um, papers are awarded that are outstanding, both from a scientific perspective, but also often from um, the perspective of their social impact. And the pet award is especially honoring Caspar Bowden, who, um, as many of us know, has been a very dear friend and colleague, and he was very much engaged in pets. He was one of the first colleagues who were present and founded, co-founded pets, and he was a well-known privacy advocate and human rights uh, fighter who has been engaged in privacy and um, engaging for privacy rights for several years, and especially he was believing in pets as a main instrument for protecting privacy. And in addition, he has been instrumental for um, founding the Pets Award and also for securing the initial funding for the Pets Award. And therefore, we memorized with the Pet Award, especially Caspar Bowden. So before we announce the winner, we want to make also the selection process more transparent. So this year we had an international multidisciplinary award committee consisting of 11 jury members actually from four different continents, also representing different aspects of pets and privacy. We had as usual an open call for nominations. So everybody was invited to nominate papers and this resulted in 19 nominations. So this was just at the time when Corona started and therefore it was maybe slightly a bit less than last year where we had 22, but still we reviewed the papers and we had an excellent selection of papers and thus went ahead. And yeah, we had both safe nominations but also nominations by people that nominated other great papers that they thought would be worthy to get the award. And we had a two round review process. In the first round, we assigned the paper to three reviewers that reviewed the papers, each paper. And then after the first review round, we reviewed the results. And it was very obvious that there were five candidate papers that were outstanding where all the three reviewers agreed that these papers would be worthwhile to receive the award. And um, yeah, we also will receive the, um, review the borderline papers, but we agreed on these five papers in the end. And then we had a second review round where actually we only included those jury members that didn't have a conflict of interest. So these were in the end only four plus the two award shares. And these four plus two 
jury members had to review the final set of five papers. And this was then followed by a voting um, round where we used um, the single transferable vote scheme. So each of the six jury members had to rank the papers. And this allowed us to uniquely determine one winner and one runner up paper, which we are now happy to announce. So first we want to congratulate the runner up paper. So the second um, or the top two paper, which um, for which we selected by the voting Henry, uh, the paper by Henry Bergeli, Yixen Soon, Anne Edmondson, Jennifer Rexford and Patrick Mittal. Uh, the paper Bambusling Certificate Authorities with BGP, which was published at USNIX Security 18 and which had an enormous impact also on the privacy and security of um, billions of internet users practically and therefore the jury um, selected this as one of the top papers. So congratulations to these authors. And secondly, now we come to the winner of this year's PET award. So the top number one paper. And this year's PET award goes to the paper, Won't Somebody Think of the Children Examining Copper Compliance at Scale, which was published at the PET Symposium actually. And the authors that receive the award are Irvine Reyes, Primal um, Viches Kera, Joel Rieden, Amit El Zarari Baon, Abbas Razak Pana, Naseo Valina Rodriguez, and Serge Egelman. So, yeah, congratulations to these outstanding achievements. And yes, and usually we would now hand over the trophy which because of the given circumstances, yeah, we um, this year decided to ship directly to the leading author, but at least you can, yeah, we can hand it now over virtually. We have here a picture of the award and of the trophy. And before the leading author, I, Irvin, will have the chance to say some words. We actually have an award speech where we asked Ian Goldberg, to give the speech this year for because he has for many reasons um yeah is a good person to uh, give such an award speech for this paper so i hand over to ian thank you so i just want to briefly talk about uh this paper and uh, uh why it was nominated so this paper presents a framework for analyzing the privacy behaviors of Android apps in order to compare them, in order to compare their behaviors, not only to the app's own privacy policies, but to a particular law in the US called COPPA or the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. And COPPA governs what is allowed to be done with the personal information, particularly of children under 13. So this is actually one of the few uh, privacy laws that the US has at all. Um, and it applies specifically to personal information of children under 13. So prior work in analyzing uh, Android apps and their privacy behaviors uh, use static analysis to try to figure out what privacy invasive actions an Android app uh, could take but they had both false positives and false negatives due to the standard issues with um, static analysis of incompleteness and unsoundness. This paper, on the other hand, takes a different tack. It uses dynamic analysis. So it actually runs the apps and just watches what information comes out of it. So it looks at what information the app sent to both first parties and third parties. So both like the manufacturer of the app or the author of the app, but also third parties like ad, ad libraries and Facebooks and advertising um, uh, networks and things like that. So in this way, they had no false positives, right? If they observed an app actually sending the personal information, 
then the app actually did do that. So they analyzed thousands of children's apps in this way. So looking at apps specifically marketed at children or for children, and they found an astounding number of them to violate not only their own privacy policies and the acceptable use policies of the libraries they use, but also this COPPA law. So this paper uh, ended up having a very high direct in impact in quite a number of areas. For example, Google and Apple um, changed their policies for privacy of children for app developers as a result of this paper. So that's great. Um, the data from the paper was actually used by class action lawsuits against app makers. It led to legal action by state attorneys general. The US Federal Trade Commission triggered uh, early public consultations on its enforcement of COPPA. And the technology developed in this paper for analyzing the privacy behaviors of apps at scale has been spun off into the company App Census. So this is really great work that has advanced the concrete protections of privacy for children and is an excellent exemplar of a paper worthy of the Casper Bowden Award for Outstanding Research in Privacy Enhancing Technologies. So over to Erwin, I believe. Hello, uh, you guys can hear me? Yes. All right, cool. Uh, so, you know, I got the trophy right here. It's a little heavy, so I'm just gonna put it aside. Uh, but man, this is uh, th wild. Uh, you know, thanks so much for the recognition. Definitely wish we were all in Montreal right now. You know, I wish, uh, you know, all, all the co-authors were together because this was, you know, th this was this was a team effort. Um, you know, shout out to Pramal, Joel, and Abbas uh, because you know we were all, you know, doing the in the trenches technical work for this, and you know, uh, having a lot of fun with that, figuring out the obfuscation so we can detect all these violations. Um, Amit did, you know, an excellent job, you know, uh, contextualizing our violations and you know, you know, providing legal insight and you know, generally just keeping us out of legal trouble. And uh, Narceo and Serge, uh, you know, thanks to them for getting our results out in, you know, in front of, you know, various stakeholders uh, to give this paper really the impact it did. Um, you know, uh, you know, just wanted to share, uh, you know, uh, a, a fun story that, you know, I, I think most people don't know about this paper. Uh, there was a bit of luck involved in this because we actually missed two deadlines before we actually got it submitted just because, you know, we had so many results from this and we, we were trying to, um, you know, get it to, you, you know, get it to tell a good story. And, you know, when Pets accepted the paper, it just happened to come out in April, 2018. And this was right around the same time as the Mark Zuckerberg congressional hearing. So, you know, it definitely had a, you know, uh, a, you know, a bit of a side effect there. Um, yeah, so this was a really fun project and we're thrilled with just how uh, relevant this has been to so many people. And, you know, uh, th there's been some follow-up work um, you know, that, that uh, you know, this work spawned off, like Joel found some apps circumventing Android's permission system uh, from, you know, the results we found. And a couple of days ago, um, uh, Catherine Hahn presented, you know, effectively her undergraduate research project on uh, the privacy benefits of, uh, of paid apps. And, you know, we use similar techniques there. Um, so again, you know, we're really grateful for this recognition. Uh, thanks so much for the pets community and the organizers for giving us, you know, a, a great venue to share these results. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> then I assume I sh stop sharing and we go on with the okay. speakers. Yes, thank you very much, Simone, for presenting that award. And congratulations to the winners. Uh, our next award will be the best, uh, the Andreas Fitzman Best Student Paper Award. Uh, this year, our two chairs uh, deciding this award are Nick Hopper and Nikita Borisov, who will present it to the winners. Uh, okay, so I am going to try to share my screen. Uh, And you might need to speak up just a bit there, Nikita. Okay, uh, can everyone hear me? 
So uh, this is uh, Nick and I were asked uh, to help select the Andreas Spitzman Best Student Paper Award. Uh, this is an award that is given at PETS, has been given for several uh, number of years at PETS to papers that were uh, written either solely or primarily by a student who's also presenting the work at PETS. Um, and it has a number of selection criteria that go into deciding the award, including reviews by the PC, the quality of the paper, the expected impact, and also, in particular, the quality of the presentation. Uh, the award is in memory of our uh, dearly departed uh, colleague and friend, Andreas Pitzman, who was, uh, uh, has been a really key participant uh, in the formation of PETS and running PETS and was on the board of the symposium until uh, his, uh, unfortunately, untimely death. Um, so uh, we're... Uh, uh, very sad that uh, um, he is unable to uh, be with us anymore, but uh, we're, I, I think he was, uh, would have been a big proponent of uh, promoting, uh, continuing to promote uh, privacy research and uh, um, that this award is doing. Um, so the way that I just want to say two quick words about how this award was selected. Uh, when the reviews were being done, the program committee had a chance to nominate papers as suitable for the award. And then, then based on these nominations, Nick and I selected a short list of papers. And then we solicited some extra feedback from a few reviewers. And we watched all of the presentations. Um, and based on that, we selected two papers to receive the Andreas Spitzman Best Student Paper Award. And I will quickly describe the first paper and then Nick will describe the second paper. Uh, the first paper, the winner, is Protecting Private Inputs, Bounded Distortion Guarantees with Randomized Approximations by Patrick Afat and Michael Huff. And I hope I'm pronouncing these names correctly. Um, this paper was an interesting one because it uh, presented a different way of thinking about privacy of, uh, of function uh, evaluation. Uh, we, for uh, quite some time now, differential privacy has been the gold standard of thinking about uh, the amount of information that a uh, particular function leaks about its inputs. Uh, but as people have realized over time, it's not ideal for all uh, possible cases. And so this paper considers alternate definitions and mechanisms for satisfying them, in particular uh, creating a mechanism that has a bounded distortion on its input, which is suitable so that uh, you know that the output is within a small delta of what you're trying to do, uh, what you're trying to compute. Um, and it has a different definition of privacy as well, uh, based on uh, entropy. Um, so I'm just, I'm not going to be able to summarize the paper in much more detail than that, but the reviewers all thought that this was an interesting contribution that would spark a lot of thoughts and discussions in the area of privacy. And uh, based on that and all the other factors, we decided to give the award to this paper. And so we'll have a brief applause. And now I'm going to hand it over to Nick for paper number two. Okay, thanks Nikita. So the uh, second, winning paper uh, is Automatic Discovery of Privacy Utility Pareto Fronts by uh, Brendan Avent, Javier Gonzalez, Tom Dita, Andre Pelayas, and Borja Bala. Uh, so what was this paper about? Uh, so uh, if you watch the keynote, uh, the keynote talk on Tuesday, Michael Kearns had a whole bunch of these graphs with the, the Pareto front, the privacy utility trade-off 
and finding all the points that were uh, Pareto optimal, right? So where none of them dominated any others. And if you're looking at a very simple uh, differentially private mechanism, you can probably find that, that trade-off just by tuning uh, one or two parameters, epsilon and maybe some other you know, delta. Um, but if you're looking at a more complicated uh, uh, differentially private machine learning mechanism like uh, DPSGD, which is trying to learn these neural networks, there's a lot of, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of different uh, parameters that go into both the utility of the mechanism that you're learning, or the, the classifier, and uh, the privacy. Uh, and so how to find or discover that Pareto front uh, is quite challenging. Uh, and so what this paper does is it, it looks in, uh, it uh, devises an algorithm that allows you to automatically discover uh, points on the Pareto front and uh, with a much lower computational budget than uh, existing techniques like grid search or sampling. Uh, and they applied, uh, the authors applied this mechanism to uh, using Ber uh, Bayesian optimization to a variety of uh, differentially private learning algorithms and on a variety of example data sets. And so uh, having this, this mechanism will help uh, practitioners who are trying to select models that give them appropriate Pareto optimal uh, uh, parameter settings for their differentially private uh, learning algorithms. Uh, so, yeah. so uh, yeah, the the again the reviewers were very positive about the the potential of this mechanism, and uh, we hope to hear a lot more from these authors uh, in the future. All right, thank you, Nick and Nikita, for doing that. Um, it was a lot of video watching and paper considering during this week and uh, I think these are great choices. Uh, so finally, we will uh, present the best reviewer award and I'm going to share my screen in order to do that. Okay, uh, so I'd like to present the Best Reviewer Award. This uh, award is designed to recognize uh, the PC member that contributed uh, unusually well to the reviewing process. Uh, reviewing is not an easy task. We have a large number of PC members to deal with our large number of submissions. We have over 100, we had over 100 PC members this year and they really work all year. We have four issues, one every three months, and there's nearly always something going on, reading papers, writing reviews, doing discussion, making decisions, responding to author rebuttals. It's not a one-time task. It's something that, that PC members pay attention to all year. So we appreciate the efforts of all reviewers. Some reviewers really go above and beyond. While on average, reviewers this year performed nine to 12 reviews, some did more um, as some papers needed extra reviewing or particular expertise. As I said, uh, we had a large number of submissions, over 330 total submissions. In addition to that, reviewers volunteer for the papers for which they uh, recommend a shepherding decision. In that process, a reviewer acts as an additional reviewer for those changes, those minor revisions that are requested by the reviewers after the decision has been made. And we had 48 papers this year that had that decision, which represents 48 PC members who did extra reviewing beyond the nine to 12 reviews per issue. To decide this award, uh, we have inside of our system a way for reviewers to rate other review, reviewers' reviews. They can indicate that the review is a good review, that it is an insightful review, or that it is a short review and, or doesn't seem to be correct. So there are positive and negative ratings. And we primarily use these in order to design, uh, in order to choose this award. So uh, I would like to announce the winner of this year's Best Reviewer Award and the winner, uh, which Kostas, uh, the other PC chair and I decided, the winner is Blaise Gur uh, from University of Chicago. 
There were many good reviewers, but Blaze stood out among the rest of the 100 plus members of the PC this year. Uh, unusual and uniquely this year, uh, Blaze was the only PC member who received positive ratings for his reviews in every single issue. Moreover, in two issues, there were multiple positive ratings of his reviews, and he served as a shepherd, which most uh, reviewers uh, don't take on. So thanks very much to Blaze Ur for his exceptional reviewing uh, duties and performance this year. We really appreciate it and are sad that he is, this was his last year on the PCA. He's not, uh, he's not on next year. So thanks to him. Okay, so that concludes uh, our award session. Uh, we move now into a break. Uh, if you'd like, I recommend checking out the hallway track. I think the beach is the one that's linked to on the page and we will resume uh, in an hour, I believe, for the final session.